Attention, you are being watched. There's no place to hide. People who live in big cities probably don't realize that they're being photographed an average of 20 times a day by surveillance cameras. Science has so perfected electronic eavesdropping equipment that there's no place in the world that your privacy is guaranteed. Every time you visit a website, someone is looking over your shoulder, timing how long you stay on a particular page and following you around wherever you go. Whenever you slip a bank card into an ATM machine or drive through an electronic toll booth on the highway, you are registering your whereabouts. In your most intimate moments, you are being watched. It is written. This is Henry Fire Robin presenting as the answer to your deepest needs, the living Christ. Today, when it is written, our subject is, be careful, angels are watching. Emmanuel Mittelman operates a wireless guitar company in Brooklyn, New York. He says that a device can be attached to any telephone line and someone can monitor a conversation in your living room or bedroom from any place in the world that can be reached by direct dialing. The snooper merely calls the number of the telephone to which it is attached and can hear conversations in the room even though the telephone is hung up. The device derives its operating power from the telephone line. Other devices displayed include microphones concealed in the olive in a martini, in a tie clasp or in a package of cigarettes, or in a picture frame, in a cigarette lighter or a woman's purse. A laser beam device is being developed that will pick up conversations inside an office by the vibration of voices bouncing off the office windows. The beam could be aimed from a location blocks away from the target office and bounced off the window to pick up the sound of vibrations. Carol Lane, author of the book Naked in Cyberspace, made the following statements. She said, in a few hours sitting at my computer, beginning with no more than your name and address, I can find out what you do for a living, the names and ages of your spouse and children, what kind of car you drive, the value of your house, and how much you paid for it. Time magazine for August 25, 1997 tells us that commercial satellites are coming online that are eagle-eyed enough to spot you in a hot tub. One way people can easily gather information is through sweepstakes. Every time you enter one, you add a few brush strokes to your digital portrait. You can't subscribe to a magazine anymore without your name being added to a list which can be purchased by anyone who wishes to use it. Every time you conduct a mail order transaction, your name is added to a list. Many mail order houses sell their lists to customers. Recently, a banker in Maryland was able to access all the names on a list of cancer patients, and then he revoked their bank loans. Not long ago, someone got hold of my name and visa number and ran up a $5,000 bill. <laughs> the nice lady at the fraud division of the credit card company, after I filed a report, took care of it with steady dispatch, and I never lost a cent. With man-made eavesdropping devices such as this, we have little reason to question God's ability to see, hear, and to record all our words, thoughts, and actions in His Book of Judgment. If man with his finite limitations can devise such phenomenal devices, you can understand what the Bible means in Jeremiah 23, 24 when it asks, Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? You're being watched all of the time. It may be that it is by surveillance cameras or electronic devices. Your family is watching you, but more than that, you're being watched by the angels. In the book of Daniel, angels are identified as watchers. King Nebuchadnezzar said, I saw in the visions of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven, Daniel 4.13. Jewish writings designate the higher angels who watch and slumber not. Angels are watching. They mark your path. They superintend the events of our lives. An old preacher worked into the night preparing a sermon for his tiny congregation consisting of a few elderly people. Usually, most of the benches in his little chapel were empty. His wife was worried about his health and wondered why he spent so much time preparing a message that would be heard by so few. His answer was classic. He said, You forget, my dear, how large my audience will be. Nothing is trivial in this world. All heaven is watching. As one writer said, 
we shall play a better game if, seeing we are encompassed, we remember who is in the grandstand. It's a solemn thought that we are on center stage throughout our lives. The book of Hebrews says in the 12th chapter of Hebrews, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 1. Paul frequently compared the Christian life to the Olympic Games of his time when all the different tribes of Greece gathered in a general assembly to display the prowess of, ra of the race. There were always spectators who gathered to throng the sides and he tells us that those who look down upon us from the heavens are a cloud of witnesses. <laughs> Angels and principalities have mustered to behold the glorious spectacle of human beings agonizing for victory over sin, putting forth their undiminished strength to copy the life of Christ. God has made us an exhibit, a show in the world's amphitheater. The angels are watching us. Of this, Billy Graham says, we know that they're watching, but in the heat of the battle, I've thought how wonderful it would be if we could hear them cheering. Well, you may not hear them cheering, but the Bible assures us that they're watching, and occasionally they make an appearance. This was the case in the experience of the prophet Elisha. The king of Syria, who was at war with Israel, became very annoyed when some of his most carefully protected secrets were leaked out to the enemy. At first, he didn't know who was guilty of espionage, thinking that it might even be one of his own army. But he was informed that it was Elisha who was at the city of Dothan. He sent his army to surround the city. One morning, Elisha's servant looked out and realized that they were surrounded. Master, we're in serious trouble. There are horses and chariots and soldiers all around us. <laughs> but the prophet wasn't worried in the slightest bit. He replied, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha asked God to open the servant's eyes. The young man looked and saw the whole area around them, surrounded by horses and chariots of fire. It was an encircling band of angels who had come to defend them. We're always surrounded by hosts of angels. They're watching us day and night. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9, For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to the angels and men. The Greek word spectacle is theatron, from which is derived our English word theater. The word refers to either a place of amusement or the thing exhibited. Those who follow God are being watched not only by the inhabitants of this little world, but by the entire universe. This whole world is a stage on which the conflict between sin and righteousness, truth and error, is being carried on before an intensely interested audience composed of the inhabitants of the universe. Multitudes in the world are witnessing this game of life, but more important than that, the monarch of the universe and the myriads of heavenly angels are also watching. The whole universe is looking on with the inexpressible interest to what is happening here. There are invisible agencies observing every word and deed of human beings. In every assembly for business or pleasure, in every gathering for worship, there are more listeners than can be seen with the natural sight. Sometimes the heavenly intelligences draw aside the curtain which hides the unseen world as they did in the time of Elisha. The story of Jacob's ladder shows that there's a wonderful connection between earth and heaven through the ministry of God's angels. The word angel means messenger, and these holy beings are God's messengers, always about their master's business. A teacher was telling her pupils about angels. She asked, how do angels do their work? A little girl replied, they do it with all their heart. Another said they do it at once. A little boy said they do it well. But after a pause, a little girl added, they do it without any questions. Well, the Bible says that angels do his commandments hearkening onto the voice of his word, Psalm 103, 20. Do angels hear everything we say? We find the answer to this in the book of Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes 5, 5 and 6, the Bible says, Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands? 
Many contracts require the signature of witnesses. Wedding ceremonies require witnesses, as do court cases. But the Bible says that not one word is ever uttered without a witness. Silent witnesses hear and take note of our vows, our promises, our protestations, our stories, and every word that passes through our lips. Sometimes we may forget this fact. I wonder if it would change our conversation if we could constantly remember those unseen witnesses to every word and deed. These witnesses record every deed of our life. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, and verse 36, we read, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. The recording angel writes down every word and deed. Many people are very religious. Their names are recorded in the records of a respectable church. Their reputation is spotless, but they have a spotted record in heaven. The recording angel has faithfully written their deeds, every selfish act, every wrong word, every unfulfilled duty, and every secret sin with every artful deception is faithfully chronicled in the book of records kept by the recording angel. I wonder how many people stop to consider that the recording angel is making a complete record of their lives which could make them blush to be confronted by it. Like a high-quality photograph produces your features, so will the books of records reflect your words, your works, and your character. And the book of Daniel gives us a portrait of the coming day of judgment when the books will be opened. Justice demands that the books of life be balanced. Thousands of wicked people have lived evil lives and perpetrated their evil designs upon others without seeming to pay the penalty for their misdeeds in this life. But there is a day of reckoning coming. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, we read, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Millions of angels will be present at the judgment scene, and the books will be opened. In the book of Revelation, John says, And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Revelation 20, 12. Verse 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Paul says, and we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14.10. He says further in the book of Acts, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead, Acts 17.31. Every human who has ever lived gathers around God's great white throne, all the kings and their subjects, all the conquerors and the people they have subjugated, all the tyrants and the people they have persecuted, all the popes, priests, preachers, and their congregations, the rich and the poor. Angels witness to the truth of our confession of faith before God. In the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5, the Bible says, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. This shows that angels are interested in our salvation. It is also in keeping with the words of Jesus in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 12, verses 8 and 9. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God, but he that denieth me before man shall be denied before the angels of God. Paul challenges us to always live a righteous life in the light of the fact that our life on this earth is the primary concern of heaven and the angelic hosts. And he says in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 21, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. In the book of Malachi, we are told that there are records kept of everything 
that is done. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. We are all judgment bound. The angels will be witnesses in the judgment day. Millions of people throughout North America and the world watched the judgment of O.J. Simpson on television. The court case ended in leaving the public completely divided. Had there been some witnesses, the case would have been settled one way or another to remove all doubts. In the United States, there seemed to be no end of accusations against Bill Clinton's moral behavior. Polls have revealed that Americans are divided in their opinion as to whether or not he is guilty of the accusations. It has been the word of the accusers against the word of the accused. If a number of witnesses had actually observed the practice of immoral acts, the doubts would soon be settled. In the great conflict of the ages, there's no lack of witnesses. We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Hebrews 12.1. There will be no denying of any acts, secret or public. Nothing will be hidden. It's all there in the books. But thank God, the judgment that all of us face someday will be different from any human judgment. It will be different in the fact that we can now choose the outcome. We're all guilty. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. In any earthly court, we would all face a death sentence. Nobody would stand a chance. But thank God, though there will be a cloud of witnesses, there will also be a lawyer, <laughs> and this lawyer has never lost a case. The Bible says that he is the propitiation of our sins and also for the sins of the world, 1 John 2.2. 2. And in 1 John 2.1, we have these comforting words. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus assured us of victory over our sins. Any sin is forgiven when it is confessed and forsaken. If we bring them and lay them at his feet and leave them there, they are his and deliverance is ours. We are on center stage. We are in the arena. We are at the Olympics of the universe. We're surrounded with a cloud of witnesses. <laughs> Though we may not hear them, they're cheering. We know they're there. It was New Year's Day, 1929. Georgia Tech was playing the University of California in a Rose Bowl. A crowd had gathered for this momentous football match. Every player was tense, anxious to do his part to help his team win the game. In the first half, Roy Regals recovered a fumble for California, but he became confused about the direction and ran the wrong way. One of his teammates tackled him just yards before he scored for the opposing team. When California tried to punt, Tech blocked the kick and scored a safety, which became the winning margin. During halftime, the Cal players sat quietly waiting to hear what the coach had to say. Regals put his blanket around his shoulders, stayed in a corner, put his face in his hands, and cried like a baby. <laughs> the coach was uncharacteristically quiet. Roy Regals knew that his blunder would likely cost the team the victory they had worked so hard for. Three minutes before the game resumed, Coach Price finally broke the silence. Regals trembled, expecting the tongue lashing he knew he deserved. But to his surprise, no reference was made to it. Men, the coach said, the same team that played the first half will start the second. The players filed onto the field, but Regals didn't budge. Roy, didn't you hear me? The coach asked. Regals responded, I couldn't face that crowd in the stadium to save my life. Coach Price put his hand on Roy's shoulder and said, Roy, Get up and go back. The game is only half over. Tech men to this day will tell you that they've never seen a man play football as Roy Regals played that second half. We've all blundered in the game of life. 
we fumbled in the presence of the largest crowd of spectators in the universe. In this speck of the world, the whole heavenly universe is looking on with great interest. Our heavenly coach is by our side. The world's Redeemer has bound earth to heaven by ties of intelligence. Heavenly beings still visit the earth as in the days when they walked and talked with Abram and Moses. But Christ has paid the infinite price of the souls of the players on the field. Have you botched up your life? Do you feel that you can't face the world, your friends, your family? Do you tremble at the thought of facing the crowd of witnesses in the universe? <laughs> your heavenly coach says, get back in the game. The game isn't over yet. We're on the winning side. There's no way we can lose unless we refuse to allow the Savior to come and take charge of our lives. Years ago, I enjoyed singing an old spiritual depicting the work of the angels as they watch over us. Not only are they participating in surveillance over us, they're also involved in our guidance and protection. They never sleep. All night, all day, angels are watching over me. Listen as my friends from the Toronto Portuguese community sing Wayne Hooper's arrangement of Angels Watching Over Me. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, how thankful we are to know that all night and all day your special agents are watching over each one of us. It's a solemn thought to realize that nothing is done in secret. Our every thought, word, and act are being observed and recorded. Lord, if there is someone hearing my voice that is bound for the judgment without a lawyer, May that person turn to you right now and accept the free salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. This is our prayer in the wonderful, holy name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
Hello, I'm Sean Boonstra. You know, an increasing fascination with the subject of angels is sweeping the whole world. A recent Time magazine poll indicates that 69% of Americans say they believe in angels, while 46% believe they have a personal guardian angel. If you've been in a bookstore lately, you'll notice that a lot of them have had to establish entire angel sections just to accommodate all of the new books. But what does the Bible say about angels? Just who are these mysterious beings that so many people are claiming to have encounters with, not just here in North America, but in cultures right around the world? What exactly do angels do? We'd like to share an important collection of messages by Pastor Feyerabend with you called Sons of the Mighty. It's an inspiring study of what the Bible says about angels, and it's yours just for the asking. Here's the information you'll need to get your own free copy. As a convenience, you may request today's free gift offer by calling our Canadian national toll-free number 1-800-253-3000. Remember, your gift is sent free and postpaid. You may have to dial the number more than once, but please keep trying. The operator needs only your name, address, and phone number, and the name of the gift you're requesting. Call toll-free now from anywhere in Canada, 1-800-253-3000. Lines are open 24 hours daily. Or... If you prefer, you may request the offer by writing to It Is Written, Box 2010, Oshawa, Ontario, L1H 7V4. Once again, the time has come to say goodbye for another week. We really appreciate hearing from you, whether it be by letter, telephone, or you can access our website at www. Dot iiw dot org. Mark and I look forward to being with you again next week at the same time. Until then, remember, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God.